everybody tiny house dreaming here it's friday night about 9 30 at night there's two tanks with the lights on and i locked myself out of the truck i know you guys can't really see me it's dark out here i had to call a tow company that doesn't have the equipment but they might know somebody who has the equipment they're the closest people. I'm kind of out in the middle of nowhere and somewhere in California at a produce farm. And I'm backed up to the dock, so I'm hoping that this process doesn't take too very long because obviously they're gonna need their dock when they're done. And I still have two stops to go pick up. I'm not gonna make it tonight. <laughs> it's been a crazy day, but just letting you guys know that things do happen. I got out to make sure that I was um, touching the two bumpers on the back and I think when I got out of my truck, uh, my arm hit the lock button so I wasn't really planning on being away from my truck right then. So I didn't think to grab my keys but I think I must have pressed the lock button and my door locked when I went to go get back in there to get my keys and um, it was locked and I was like, well, crap. So at least while I'm waiting for somebody, they're loading me, but I don't even know if this guy's gonna be able to help me if I have to call like another company, they're way further away. So he said he's gonna try to see if he can get the equipment and he knows where I'm at, he's local. So I thought I would give him 10, 15 minutes to see if he texts or calls me back um, before I try to get like a, a company that's kind of a more main company but they're further out like I'm not close to any truck stops I'm on some side highway so I'm hoping that he comes through for me because I don't want to take up their dock plus I want to get going but I hope everybody else is having a better day or better night than I am but I'll talk to you guys later hey guys so I got in my truck thankfully 30 minutes $200 later, but it's unlocked. Do you mind saying hi to you too? Sure. He unlocked it. Up. You can't see him, but oh my gosh, he saved me. I will talk to you guys later. Hey everybody, it is Saturday. Um, it's like 2.04 p.m. Um, I'm at my second shippers. Um, I didn't have well, for some weird reason, when Prime sent me this load, it had three pickups and then one stop in Maryland. Three pickups in California. Um, the first pickup was where I was last night when I locked my keys in the, the truck. That was San Juan Batista. Um, I believe. Yes. Without looking at the app, I think that's where I was last night. And my appointment time was at 9 p.m. And my next two appointment times had windows from like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So there was no way that I was going to get to either of those second appointments by 8 p.m. when my first appointment was at 9 p.m. So once I, I got to my first appointment at like 6 something, like maybe 6.10, 6.15 in the evening. Um, and I let my dispatcher, when I tried to check in, he told me that they couldn't let me check in any sooner than an hour prior to my appointment time because there was just like, it was a lot of trucks there. So like there were, was nowhere on their property to park because previous trucks were already taking up the spots that they had. There weren't a lot of spots. Um, so he told me to go close to the freeway. There was like a little gravel pit that you can park in. Um, so I stayed there until 8 and then I checked in at 8 o'clock um, But still didn't get backed up to the dock until 9 p.m. to my appointment time But once I got backed into the dock, although I like they had started loading me once I realized I left my keys in the truck um, They had already the light turned red and they were already loading me and they had finished unloading me before the tow truck guy got there which he got there in about, it took me about 15 minutes to find someone um, to come out. And once I found him and talked to him, he said it would be about 30 minutes. And he was like pretty accurate on his 30 minutes. And that cost me $200.
Damn. I'm trying to cover up my credit card number, but you see that 200 at the bottom? 200 bucks just for him. It took him like maybe five minutes. He um, used my passenger side and like unhooked the, I guess he was doing like the little latch thing. But what happened was when I got out, my arm hit the button. Like when I was leaning out of it and I think I even heard it and didn't realize what it was that I heard. Um, and as soon as I, the door closed, like I, I was like, oh crap. And what I was doing, I was getting out, um, cause it was dark how I was backing up and you know, you have to have your doors open. So sometimes depending on how the bumpers on the dock look, like there's little black bumpers on each side and on the back of your trailer, you have little black bumpers that line up and they touch each other. And the way the dock was, I couldn't tell with my doors open if I had um, hit the bumper properly to like know if I was lined up okay enough for them to put the platform down. So I had took my phone to use my flashlight on my phone, even though I have a flashlight. But luckily, I took my phone and used that flashlight. Um, and I had got out to make sure that I was lined up on the bumper. And so like I wasn't trying to walk to the office or walk away from the truck. I literally was just going to the back of my trailer to see if I was lined up but as soon as like I heard the click when my arm hit it and it you know how sometimes you're like in the process of doing something so even though I heard the click like the door closed and as soon as the door closed it like clicked in my head what that click that I just heard was and it was the automatic thing you know locking the door and I was like oh my gosh so yeah that was but it didn't take that long for the guy to get there it was a bit chilly but not super bad um, but there was like no driver's lounge or anything like that in the inside. It was a cold storage place for produce. So the inside was actually colder than it was on the outside, but everything worked out. I got in the truck, um, but I didn't get to make it to my next two appointments because both places closed at 8 PM. So it's not like they refused to take me because I missed my appointment. They literally were closed and they both opened up at 8 AM this morning. Um, so what I did was I, it was about 95 miles between my, where I picked up my load and to here where I'm at now. See, I literally just came from door seven. I can't see what I'm pointing at, but you guys, I think can see door seven over there. Um, I've been here since about 1130 and I just pulled out of door seven. I'm already loaded. Um, I need to go to my third stop and I'm picking up two pallets of something. But um, I have to be there by 1800, which I believe is five o'clock. I think it's five o'clock um, or maybe six o'clock, whatever. But I'm just waiting for them to call me in the office and let me know that my paperwork's done so I can go get my bills and then I'll be headed to my next stop. Um, but yeah, so it's been I went, so basically I was saying what I did was I left that shipper um, and I drove about 75 miles. Um, it was like a total of 95 miles to get here, but there's literally like, I don't know if you guys can see, I'm like in the middle of nowhere. There's not like side streets or anything that you can park on. Um, so there was a rest area like 25, maybe 29 miles from here. Um, before I hit this exit on Interstate 5, so I got myself to that rest area. I shut down for my 10 hours, um, and as soon as I was able to start rolling, which was like at 11.06 this morning, I came here, and it took me like 30 minutes to get here, not long at all. Um, but yeah, so now I'm headed to my next load to pick it up. And hey guys, I made it to my third appointment, like literally 15 minutes before six o'clock, which is 1800. And that's my, my window was from 8 a.m. to 1800. So, and I'm at like in the middle of nowhere, nice little property, um, but it's like a little farm, you know? I mean, it's not super little, but little in comparison to the like huge farm. So when they close, they close. Like there's no 24 hour establishment going on none of that but I made it in time and the two gentlemen were so nice that he's like man I thought I was leaving to have a drink for the weekend I said two pallets I just got two pallets please so I'm docked I'm not sure if he is done with it because it's literally only two pallets the reaper's on 
but um I had got out the truck to come and try to see if I could tell if the door had been pulled down. Oh, it's green. Let me see. Yep, they're done. Whew. Sometimes when you um, are not sure, like, cause it, I wasn't able to even see it's green from sitting in my, oh, hey, you're done? I'm coming. I am coming. But um, you're not. A, I wasn't able to see the green light. See how you can't see it because my door is open, and I parked a little bit on over. But I was trying to hurry up because they were standing with the door open waiting, and I'm ready to get up out of here because my clock is running down. My 14 hours has caught up with my 10 hours. I have about six hours. I want to at least get to Barstow. Um, before I have to shut down because I don't want to be in traffic in the morning. I'll be right back with you. Alrighty, it was that easy. Got my papers. I need to pull up, make sure that my weight's okay, and then get up out of here. This is a nice little farmy property though. I like how they have the palm trees and stuff. And they have a nice space for trucks to like turn around and maneuver. And they even have overnight parking, not that I'm going to use it, but it's behind me. Um, what is this place called? Hornis Inc. Like Hornis Farms, H-R-O-N-I-S. Pretty cool. All the people I've met here were nice. Um, but yeah, guys, so I'm about to hit the road, so I'll talk to you later. Maybe well, guys, I'm parked for the night somewhere off the 58. I was gonna keep going and try to get like either to the edge of California or right outside of California because um, I'm real close to being overweight on my trailer and I was hoping that my the fuel I had in my reefer tank would get me to where I just said to the edge of California or at least pad like I'm going the 58 to the 15 to the 40. And I know that there's a scale, right? I think it's on the 40. I don't know, like past needles. Um, or it was before needles, somewhere by needles. I use my Trucker Path app to like look once I get close. But I was hoping that my reefer fuel that I had already would get me past that and then I could feel, fill up. But then I could slide my tandems back to get that weight off my trailer. But I kept getting a fuel alarm. My reefer fuel was low. I didn't want to mess with it. I don't like chancing it. So I ended up not filling up. I think I went to like half a tank of reefer fuel. Um, so, and then I had issues with what temperature the reefer was supposed to be at because the bills, I had three pickups like I told you guys. And the bills were like, one of them said specifically 34, no temperature range. So for a couple of hours, my um, fleet manager, the weekend guy, has been like looking into it. And he finally got me an answer just two minutes ago, but I had to keep stopping to check my message because you can't check your message while you're driving. So it was just a mess. So I was like, you know what, let me just shut down for the night. It's like eight o'clock or like 8.07 or something. And I can start rolling early in the morning. Uh, but I'm about to go and take me a shower. Anytime you see my bag hanging on my shoulder, that's what that is. Well, good morning, everybody. Tiny House Dreaming here. It's Sunday morning. Um, I don't know why every time I come on when I'm doing clips, I say, Tiny House Dreaming here. Like the first clip, hello, that's all I need to say. It's just a habit. I've got to get better at that. But it is Sunday morning, about 6 a.m., the sun is just coming up. Look at that pretty sky. You see it pink and all that? I don't know if y'all can see that it's pink, but you know I love me some pink. I am trying to wake up this morning. I got to make my bed, but I'm going to start driving. Hopefully, I will make it to at least somewhere in Arizona. Well, I'll make it to Arizona, definitely. Hopefully, I might make it into New Mexico today. Um, I have about 15 more minutes that I have to sit 
before my time comes back um, in which time I will make my bed make my green juice wash my face um, but I just wanted to say good morning hope everybody has a good day I'm gonna try to get this all these clips I've been making I'm gonna try to post this video today and on to the next talk to you guys later howdy everybody it's still Sunday it is about noon like probably a little bit before noon no oh, I didn't brush my hair very well this morning um, <laughs> um I change of plans I'm not going to Maryland anymore I swapped a trailer with a couple in Ontario um I'm sitting in front of the drop yard in Fontana California still in California um I swapped trailers with him and his wife um he's taking my trailer to Maryland there was no way I was gonna really make it by Wednesday at what was it 6 a.m um and I figure why, you know, like, I'd rather swap it out here. Um, I'm still trying to get out of California. My fleet manager said he'll get me out of California tonight. I have his trailer that's delivering to Colton, California. So I pick, I swapped with him in Ontario at a Petro truck stop. And I didn't want to pay $20. So you get the first two hours for free to park in their truck stop. Um... And after two hours, it's $20, I think. Or, like, you have to buy $20 worth of stuff, which is, like, a Popeye's and stuff. And I don't want $20 worth of stuff. Um, I hate to, like, be forced. And I just really disagree with truck stops or, yeah, is that what I'm trying to call it? Yeah, truck stops make charging for, I mean, like, people are there. We're spending an arm and a leg for fuel. We typically buy stuff, like maybe not $20 worth of stuff, but something, like something to drink, whatever. But a lot of people are buying the food. Like for you to charge for, I'm so in disagreement with truck stops that charge people to park. It's like, how greedy can you get? Um, so I'm over it. So if I have any other choice, um, besides the fact that I'm cheap. Now, I don't like giving my $20 just to sit for... And I mean, for literally for me, my load drops at 1600. So that's four o'clock. Um, and it was like 14 or 15 miles away from where I was. Now I'm like, um, Proceed 10 miles on Mulberry from Avenue in 1, here. Feet. But the Turn reason why right to Slover Avenue. The reason why I came here was because it was on the way to where I'm going anyways. And I can sit out here. Like, I mean, I'm literally just parked on the street. Like, it's nothing special. There's no stores around. There's no bathroom. Well, there is like a porta potty in the... Because the drop yard is not like a big terminal or anything. I think I said this on another video. It's literally just a yard where it's secure. They have a, like... Monday through Friday, they have an office where the people are in the office. And then on off hours, they have like a security guard and a little shack that checks in all the trailers coming in and out. So it's a secure location. Um, but it's literally just like a parking lot yard, like a gravel yard um, with a lot of trailers on it. And they're all prime trailers. Um, so it's not anything special. But seeing how I just, like I said, it's like right before noon. I have to drop this load at 4 p.m. I think I can check in because it's like a Sam's Club distribution center. I should be able to check in an hour early. So I'm not going to be sitting that long. Um, I did use the restroom in Ontario. So there's no reason why I can't just sit here on the street. Hey guys. Well, I made it to my Colton, California receiver. I'm backed up in the dock. Well, you can't see. I'm not going to open my window because I let my air out. But I'm here at the Walmart or Sam's Club distribution center. Um, it's a live unload, so I might be here for a couple hours knowing how Walmart is. I can't even open my doors and fully back up until 4 p.m. to my appointment time. But I was able to get mostly back and she was just like sit in your truck and wait till 4 at 4, open the doors and I have to un unattach from my trailer 
and pull ahead to clear my fifth wheel um but yeah and then just sit around and wait for a phone call so good times guys i will probably make this my last clip since it's kind of the end of a load and then i will start my next clips when i figure out where i'm going i still don't know where i'm going next but hopefully my fleet manager keeps his word and gets me out of california although i have can you see let's see i have only four hours and 48 minutes left on my 14 hour clock same that's up here four hours and 58 minutes my bad so depending on how long i take here and where he has me do my next pickup at i might be able to get my next um load picked up if it's like a drop and hook maybe um and maybe not before i run out of time it just really depends on how long i'm here so hopefully i'm not here for too long but again i'm only 10 miles from fontana so if i do run out of time i will spend the night parked outside of the drop yard and then first thing in the morning or i mean it's still early so like in the middle of the night maybe i can go pick up we'll see how it goes but i'll talk to you guys later have a great day